Welcome back. In the last few videos I went over getting the clutch pedal and gear selector working, both small but very important steps towards getting this 1.8 turbocharged engine from an Audi TT to work inside the Micro's tiny shell. Speaking of the Micro shell, this is Nissan part number 72757-37479. You can find this part in various places on most Nissans from this era, and even on many Hondas and Mazdas too. I'm not a fan of it though, so I'm going to delete it. And whilst I'm at it, I'm going to find a way to make this entire beam removable so that I can easily roll the entire powertrain in and out from the front instead of lifting it over with the engine crane that isn't mine and I really need to give back. <laughs> I started this section of the project back in September and it took place in parallel alongside other jobs that you might have seen in previous videos, so expect a few breaks in continuity if you're following along. I started by using this knotted wire wheel on the angle grinder, however I quickly realised this thing was pretty deadly. The wires splayed out owing to the sheer rotational speed the grinder was spinning at, which was clearly too fast for the wheel. It was also off balance so it would have exploded into pieces if I kept using it. I fell back to the smaller wire wheel on the drill instead. Having attacked the area for a while, it became apparent that a single patch job wasn't going to cut it. The rust was at its worst at the corners, which is where several parts of the structure meet together and overlap where they're spot welded. This overlapping can hold water, which then attacks the structure from the inside, and given the nature of unibody designs, this is probably common throughout the rest of the car. There's nothing else for it other than to keep cutting until only clean steel remains. Okay, so I've been doing a little bit of thinking on how I'm going to approach this whole situation. And previously, I think I wanted, what I wanted to do was try and rebuild all of this. And then I was going to try and make this part removable with a flange here. And then this whole middle part would just be able to come out. That would be the neatest way. And if your cross member was still in good condition, then this is probably the best way to do it. My cross member is not in good condition, as we can see. And over here, not quite as bad, but I don't think it's going to be great behind there. But what I did find was that behind here, you've got three K 
captive nuts behind this panel. And uh, there's normally a, a pretty big bracket that sits here. So uh, this thing here. So bolts in there, pretty hefty steel bracket. And uh, it's a tow hook, or at least it's one half of the uh, front tow hook. There's another one that goes over here, that goes on the other side, and this one actually has a towing eye on it that pokes out through the front bumper. What I'm basically saying here is that this panel and this whole section here is designed to be strong enough that you can pull the car using them alone. So knowing that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to re-engineer this entire section, but I'm going to cut all of this out and I'm going to box this in so that it's sort of boxed there. And then I'm going to use these three, uh, well, maybe maybe the two. I might dr even drill a third hole up here just, to, just for the purpose of this. And I'm then just going to make a plate that comes off of there and then just a straight piece of tubular steel that just goes straight across the front of the car uh, and it will be detachable by those three bolts. I think that's the best way to do it. This panel here just connects to the top so all I'm going to do is I'm just going to square that off and then this whole cross member can come off. I've reinstalled the crash bar just to keep the front of the car together whilst this whole cross member gets moved. I'm not sure how much tension it's under although given that I've removed half of it here, it's probably not an awful lot. It's probably still quite a lot of strength in there though. So yeah, next thing I'm gonna do is uh, start cutting all of this material out. It doesn't mean that this repair I did here was for nothing, but that's okay because it's just a bit of practice if nothing else. <laughs> Right, so here's the plan. No, this is not the plan. This is the plan I wanted to follow but couldn't because at the time I didn't have the right materials available. What material I did have was the incorrect dimension so it wouldn't work with the locations of the holes I planned on using. So whilst what I actually ended up making closely resembles this design, it's not the same. So let's just head straight to making the actual, albeit compromised version.
what you're looking at is about four days of work, uh, a few hours at a time, of course. So what it basically amounts to, slightly different from the design up on the whiteboard I showed you earlier, um, but basically just down to the restriction of materials I had to hand and uh, not being able to just go out and get new stuff. Um, I've had to kind of improvise a little bit. So we still have the end pieces here, uh, which are cut out from this, uh, this box section I made the gearbox mount from. Uh, but instead of going with the hole on like, facing you, like the, the diagram shows, it's now going up instead, and then I've just plated it on top. Um, I think that's better because then the bottom's open, so it can drain any fluid out if it gets up there. Uh, and then instead of tubing, I've used uh, this 80 by 40 mil box section that I had lying around. That's just scrap. It is galvanized, but I've ground off the uh, the coating where I've welded it, and I'll have to do the same wherever else I decide to weld any tabs or anything to it. And then they're just uh, kept together by these two mil plates that I made. So the way this goes into the car is quite simple. If you go up into the chassis rail, you can see there's some threads and there's a bolt under there that I borrowed from the nut bucket. And it just goes into a, a nut with a spreader plate. There's quite a lot of adjustability inside the hole and that's on purpose. And then if we look at the top of the end points, you can see I've keyholed it. And the reason I've done that was originally this was a, just a single hole here. And what you'd have to do is you'd have to lift up the whole cross member and then try and thread that in with a load of weight over, over it. So it was just really difficult. So I've made it so that you can put it in most of the way and then you can just slot it on. So I'll show you how I do that now. Let me just put you down for a sec. Let me just pop that in from the front. Slot it in the hole and then it goes on like that. Easy. And then you would tighten those down, stick an extension up there and tighten it. And then you've got these two holes here, which are the original factory ones. And where there, were, there was just a spreader plate with two captive nuts on the end. That now bolts straight through into there. So you've got three points of contact. You've got one there, one there, and then you've got the one up in there as well. And if you're gonna jack the car up, then the weight of the car is gonna be on there anyway. So the keyholing doesn't really change anything. And it's still held in from going backwards and forwards through these two. It is heavy. Um, and that's just because the material I had was too thick for what I really needed it for. Like this is four, either four or five mil thick wall. This is two mil thick, which is fine. Uh, this is two mil thick, which is okay. And I can lighten this by cutting holes and things in it just to shed a bit of weight out of it. Uh, what I will do is, uh, is I'm gonna box this section in just so it looks a little bit nicer. And I'm gonna cut some more material out of this. So overall, very happy with that. And I can now finally get on with the rest of the car because this was really just a side project, a setback. Hold on, before we go any further, I need to make sure that the bumper still fits. Yep, looks good. Resume. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
only does the bumper still fit, but the lower mounting tabs line up perfectly with the underside of the beam, nearly as if I'd factored all that in. I also notched the spreader plates to clear some overlap so now they sit flat. A quick coat of black paint to make it look a bit nicer and I can put this one to bed for now. I realise this part is exceedingly heavy and I understand the ramifications of making this part overly strong but I will be remaking this part in the future. But only once this has done its job of playing mock-up whilst I figure out placement for the radiator and other front mounted accessories. Speaking of which, if you don't want to miss all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with the future progress. That's all from me, thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me in the next one. Bye for now.